Yo, my name is BJ Gador. I'm the former fitness director for the Men's Health brand and the author of Your Body Is Your Barbell. I've broken down the exercises into four unique categories. One, core. Two, lower. Three, upper. And four, total. Furthermore, this list is designed for home and travel use to best cater to busy parents and professionals. The only required equipment are body weight training tools, dumbbells, medicine balls, and resistance bands. There are zero barbell exercises. The main focus here is to make lighter loads go a longer way to achieve the holy grail of fitness, longevity. First, I'll break down each exercise in a minute or less, including its unique benefits, regressions, progressions, modifications, plus my favorite variations. Then I'll pick my top two exercises from each category to form a minimalistic elite eight list that I will turn into the ultimate 20 minute fit over 40 express workout you can do anytime, anywhere. Before we get to the first exercise, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. This video took a ton of time, energy, and resources to put together, and your support is much appreciated. And if you can't watch this full video now, put it to your watch later list. All right, baby, let's get to work. Core. The core category focuses first and foremost on spinal stabilization in all three planes of motion by targeting all the muscles of the trunk and the pelvis. A strong and stable core bridges the gap between the upper and lower body for fluid full body movement with no leaks in the kinetic chain. It also bulletproofs your back. Hollow body. Hollow body is a foundational move in gymnastics to teach proper spinal positioning and total body tensioning. The shape resembles a lying banana or hammock. You must flatten your lower back to the floor throughout the drill. It also teaches you how to breathe in a compressed position. Mix between inhaling through the nose into the belly and fully exhaling through the mouth for time or reps. Start with the tucked body position. Progress to moving the arms and legs away from each other until you're fully extended. The hollow body pump, where you move between a tucked and extended position, is a fantastic dynamic variation for abdominal development. You can also add rocks and rolls to increase the stability demands. Be sure to do it on a padded surface. My favorite variations are doing flies and pullovers with light dumbbells. This absolutely crushes your core and mobilizes your shoulders. Front Plank. The front plank trains your anterior core to resist lumbar spine extension, and you must first master the plank before you master the push-up. It can be performed on the forearms or hands. The forearm variation is more of a strength challenge, where the longer lever hands variation is more of a stability challenge. Train both positions for best results. Make it easier by elevating the hands. Make it harder by elevating the feet. The classic progression is flowing from four to three to two points of contact to increase the stability demands in the following order. Both hands and feet, one leg, one arm, and opposite arm and leg. The five second box breath plank is my favorite variation because it strengthens your most important core muscle, the diaphragm. Five second inhale through nose into belly, five second breath hold, five second exhale through mouth, and five second breath hold. That's one rep or breath cycle that takes 20 seconds to complete, do three to six reps, or hold for one to two minutes. Side Plank. The side plank trains your lateral core to resist lateral flexion, or side bending, and rotation. It can be performed on the forearms or hands. The forearm variation is more of a strength challenge where the longer lever hands variation is more of a stability challenge. Train both positions for best results. You can either stack the feet harder or stagger them easier. Make it easier by elevating the hands. Make it harder by elevating the feet. The exercise can be further regressed by bending the knees at 90 degrees. This is called a short lever side plank. The top two progressions involve elevating a leg. Elevate the top leg, abduction, to work your lateral glutes more. Elevate the bottom leg, adduction, to work the groin more. The rolling plank is an excellent option because you're flowing between three main plank positions, left side, front, and right side. My favorite variation is a side plank to push up transfer because you change levels and move in all three planes of motion. Back plank. The back plank or bridge trains your posterior core to resist flexion. Consider it a reverse front plank. This drill is a must to offset the damaging effects of prolonged sitting 
by activating the glutes and mobilizing the hips. Adding a mini band above the knees increases lateral hip activation. The proper bridging progression is as follows. Knees bent, lying on back. Knees bent on hands, legs straight on hands, and legs straight on forearms. You can add marches to any variation to strengthen imbalances between sides and increase hip flexor activation. My favorite variation is the glute ham walkout, where you start with your knees bent and slowly walk your feet out until your legs are fully extended and then return to the starting position. Try this for two minutes for one of the best equipment-free glute and hamstring workouts in the game. You can even add marches to this. Crawls. Quadruped movement sets the stage for sound bipedal movement. That's why you must first learn to crawl before you can walk. The bear crawl works the anterior chain or the front side of your body. Think of it as a moving plank. The crab crawl works the posterior chain or back side of your body. Think of it as a moving bridge. First, position your hands under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. Then sync up the movement of the opposing arm and leg and mix between an inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth every step. You can perform both types of crawls from a high and low position. Mix between linear and lateral movement for best results. My favorite variation is the bear to crab roll, which allows you to fluidly flow between both shapes for a three-dimensional mobility and stability challenge. You can also play with arm and leg reaches to spice them up. One of my favorite starters or finishers is five to 10 minutes of continuous crawls, resting only as needed. Overhead sit-ups. You don't have to do sit-ups to get abs or be fit, but it's also not the worst exercise either. Stop doing sit-ups like this. The key is focusing on moving upwards instead of going forwards. Sit tall. This way your hips and shoulders drive the movement instead of your spine. This exercise is also best performed at slower speeds, especially on the eccentric or lowering phase. Take three to five seconds going down for best results. Start with your body weight or a light med ball. Exhale through the mouth going up, inhale through the nose going down. Then hold the dumbbell in one hand to strengthen imbalances between sides and increase the stability demands. Hold the dumbbell in both hands for more of a strength building stimulus. My favorite variation is a double press sit up where you do two floor presses, sit up, and then do one overhead press. Repeat this complex for time. This is one of the best arms, abs, and shoulders workouts you'll ever do. Finally, the sit up get up where you move from the ground to stand and back is also the ultimate full body abs exercise. Reverse crunches. The reverse crunch targets your hip flexors and lower abs. I highly recommend squeezing a foam roller or padded med ball between your legs to increase pelvic floor activation. And because your pelvis attaches to your lumbar spine, this also optimizes lower back positioning. Start with a lighter med ball and slowly build up from there. First, master the hip flexion component. With your knees bent at 90 degrees, slowly lower your feet to the ground while keeping your lower back flat into the floor. Then add a posterior pelvic tilt at the top to get after those lower abs. Lift your hips off the ground as if pouring a glass of water towards your head. Press your arms underground for maximum stability. You can also grab onto heavy weights placed behind your head. This will improve your leverage and allow for a more sustained muscular contraction. You must use a slow and controlled tempo for best results. Abs wheel rollouts. The abs wheel is one of the few fitness infomercial products that actually works. First, lock your legs together to increase midline tensioning and spinal stability. Squeeze a med ball or foam roller for best results. Then, keeping your arms completely straight, slowly roll out as far as you can for three to five seconds without hyperextending your lower back. Smoothly inhale through your nose into your belly to stabilize your spine. Gradually increase the range of motion until you're fully extended with your nose touching the floor. Fully exhale through your mouth to pull yourself back to the starting position. My favorite variation is adding band tension to light up your lats as you roll back to the starting position. I recommend sets of five to 10 reps with flawless form, or try one to two minute work periods and focus on time under tension. No abs wheel? Modify with workout or furniture sliders, which increase the stabilization demands by working each arm independently. You can also do equipment-free push-up walkouts, which have added hip mobility benefits. Chops and twists. It's critical to first train your core on the floor to build a rock solid foundation, but arguably the best core training is done on your feet. Chops and twists teach you how to pivot your feet 
and rotate your hips while stabilizing your spine. This is one of the most important movement patterns for overall athleticism. The chop is done in a diagonal manner from low to high. Be sure to sit down into each rep so that your shoulders are always higher than your hips. The twist is done horizontally at shoulder level. Increase the difficulty by squatting down more to increase hip and thigh engagement. Hold the med ball to increase the loading demands. You can also grab the other end of an anchored resistance band. The band provides a unique dynamic variable resistance where the tension increases as it stretches. It also pulls you back faster, increasing the deceleration demands. Hanging leg raises. The hanging leg raise is the king of core exercises. The arms overhead position also provides the biggest core stability challenge, plus it tests your grip strength to the max. You should be able to hang effortlessly for a full minute before attempting this exercise. Focus on pulling down against the bar for maximum stability. Fully exhale through your mouth to lift your knees above hip level to activate your high hip flexors or psoas. Squeeze the top position for a count or two. Then inhale through the nose to slowly lower back to the starting position. Progress from alternating legs to lifting both legs simultaneously. You can further regress the exercise by doing an overhead march with your feet on the floor while gripping a pull-up bar. I mostly do this exercise with a padded Dynamax med ball between my legs. This not only trains the pelvic floor, but it spaces my feet properly for this exercise to function like a reverse squat. That's right, it will improve your squatting mechanics. I use a heavier med ball for lower reps and a lighter med ball for higher reps. This move can also be done from a dip support position. Lower! The lower category focuses on the muscles of the hips and legs or your lower body. There's a healthy mix of hip and knee dominant exercises. Hip dominant exercises target your glutes and hamstrings more and knee dominant exercises target your quads and calves more. Try to do an equal amount of exercises in each category for training balance. If there's a weakness in any given category, double or triple up on those exercises to strengthen that weakness. Most people could benefit from doing more hip dominant drills. Hip thrusts. The hip thrust is a research proven exercise for greater glute activation than squats or deadlifts with minimal spinal stress. If you have tight hips, weak glutes, or knee pain, then this exercise is the best place to start. It can be done on the floor, but the range of motion is limited. The shoulders elevated hip thrust increases quad contribution. The feet elevated hip thrust increases hamstring engagement. Once you can easily do 20 reps on both legs, progress to the single legged variation. If you notice any imbalances between sides, do two to three sets on the weak side for every set you do on the strong side. I highly recommend adding a mini band above the knees to maximize hip development. You can also add band resistance around your hips or place a weight on your lap, though I prefer to keep squeezing out better form and technique with my body weight. Hip hinges. The hip hinge isolates hip flexion and extension for glute and high hamstring development. It also works the entire backside of your body or posterior chain. Though this exercise can be done with the legs straight, it's typically performed with soft knees. Think about closing a car door with your butt. I recommend using the double leg variation to build size and strength and the single leg variation for balance, mobility, and stability. To perform the double legged variation, hold a pair of dumbbells and slide them down your legs until they reach knee or upper shin level or when your trunk is parallel to the floor. Only go lower if you can maintain a slight natural arc in your lower back. Go slowly and never force the range of motion. You can also do this with a kettlebell between your legs. To perform the single leg variation, start by using both hands for self-assistance so you can keep your hips and shoulders perfectly square to the ground. Add a knee lift to strengthen the hip flexors. Progress to only using single arm self-assistance. Progress further by holding a weight in the non-assisting hand. If you want to put weight in both hands, kickstand the non-working leg on the floor, a box, or onto a wall. For best results, add a mini band to both drills. You can also perform them with your feet on slant boards to increase ankle and hip mobility. Glute ham leg curls. Your upper hamstrings assist the glutes in extending the hips. Your lower hamstrings flex the knees. The sliding or rolling leg curl works both functions with minimal spinal stress, making it the best hamstrings exercise for longevity. Follow this five-step progression for best results. One, eccentric only. Two, full range reps. Three, add weight or band tension. Four, single-legged eccentric only. And five, single-legged full range reps. No sliders? Modify with the glute ham walkout. But you can also use socks or paper plates on a wooden or tile floor and furniture sliders on carpet or turf. This exercise never gets easier. In fact, 
It only gets harder with practice as you improve your form, increase range of motion, and get a better mind-muscle connection. The key is to fight to keep your hips fully extended throughout the drill. Drive your arms underground to maximize leverage and stability, plus strengthen your upper back. Shin Box Squats The Shin Box shape is the ultimate hip mobilizer, plus it's the best way to retrain your squatting pattern from the ground up. Consider it the best glutes exercise you're not doing. The 90-90 shape on the floor winds both hips into rotation, something most trainees desperately need, especially if they suffer from chronic back pain. The front leg is externally rotated, and the back leg is internally rotated. These extreme joint angles put your body to mechanical disadvantage, meaning the stronger you get here, the stronger you'll be on your feet. Adding a squat to this position will strengthen imbalances between sides, level the pelvis, and provide a complete hip workout. Start by using a stick, pole, or PVC pipe to self-assist with your upper body. Then bear hug a medicine ball for counterbalance and core activation. Progress further by holding a weight at chest level. Start with a 25 to 50 pound bell and slowly build up to 100 plus pounds. Please be patient with this exercise. There's a big learning curve, but the payoff down the road is nothing short of a mobility miracle. My favorite variation is the shin box to lunge to squat flow. Do one rep per side for 10 straight minutes for a legendary lower body mobility workout. Box squats. The box squat autocorrects your technique, plus takes pressure off of your back and knees, making it easier to recover from. It also teaches you how to properly sit and stand. I love using an adjustable aerobic step with risers for micro progression. Add a mini band racked above the knees to increase lateral hip activation and prevent inward valgus knee collapse. The ideal squat depth depends on your individual hip anatomy, limb length, body size, injury history, and goals. Thighs parallel to the floor or slightly above or below is the perfect functional depth for most people. If your goal is to go ass to grass, gradually lower the box height over time to get there safely. If you have a history of knee pain or you want to stress your glutes and hamstrings more, keep your shins vertical to the floor. If your goal is max quads activation, use a more upright trunk and forward knee position. You can increase the difficulty by doing goblet or double dumbbell front squats. You can also add jumps from a dead sit position for lower impact jump training. Plus, you can do them single-legged, just start with a higher box than normal. Once you've perfected the box squat, you're ready to squat in free space. Try doing 10 reps every minute on the minute for 10 straight minutes. I once did this for 30 minutes straight with a 100-pound dumbbell, and it changed me forever. Step-ups. The step-up is arguably the most functional lower body exercise. Consider it the hip-dominant sibling to the lunge, and it's also easier on the knees. Unlike the lunge, it requires you to lift your leg up, recruiting the hip flexors more. The ideal starting step height is where your top thigh is approximately parallel to the floor or your box squat height. You can gradually progress to a higher box over time, but you should always be able to keep your back foot flat on the floor at the starting position. You should be able to do 10 minutes of continuous alternating step ups before adding weight. To get the most out of this exercise, accentuate the eccentric phase by taking three to five seconds to step down. Explode up to maximize fast switch fiber activation. Hold a pair of dumbbells for size and strength. Hold a dumbbell on either hand to increase core and hip activation. My favorite variation is the step up to reverse lunge for the best of both worlds. 10 to 20 minutes of continuous alternating step ups is an amazingly mindless workout on days when stress is high and focus is fading. Split squats. Split stance leg training increases inner and outer hip thigh activation and makes lighter loads go a longer way. It's also my favorite way to train the legs for longevity. Think of it as an in-place or stationary lunge, meaning it's a stronger, more stable position. A closer stance with the knee over the toes and an upright trunk targets the quads more. A longer stance with a vertical shin angle shifts the stress to the glutes. Self-assist with a stick or PVC pipe as needed. Elevating the front foot extends the range of motion for greater hip flexion on the lead leg. This stretches the glutes more, making the exercise more hip dominant and less taxing on the knees. Start with a slight elevation using a low box or step, weight plate, or book that's three to six inches off of the ground. Elevating the rear foot increases the stretch on the quads and hip flexors of the back leg. It also shifts the load onto the lead leg more with approximately an 80-20 versus 50-50 front to back foot weight distribution. There are two primary setups. One, place the toes of your back foot on a lower elevation. Two, place the top of your back foot on a higher elevation, no higher than your ideal box squat depth. I love two minute work periods per side with just 30 seconds rest between sides. 10 to 20 minutes of that extended time of retention will give you wheels of steel and it's easy on the knees. Lunges. This is the most complete lower body exercise, period. The lunge is basically a full range of motion version of walking, thus adding strength, mobility, and stability to your gait. In fact, I believe 10 minutes of continuous alternating or walking lunges should be a prerequisite to running for the same amount of time. There was a time when I couldn't do a single bodyweight lunge from debilitating knee injuries as a football player in my youth, but I fully committed to this exercise and built up to doing one hour of continuous walking lunges without stopping. This led to a shocking leg transformation using this simple bodyweight exercise. I love to warm up with self-assisted lunge switches. Focus on driving the down knee underground to create space. 
The reverse lunge targets the glutes and hamstrings more, especially the sliding variation. The forward lunge hits the quads more, and the lateral lunge stresses the inner and outer hips and thighs more, and can also be done with sliders. My favorite variation is the seesaw lunge, which is the best way to mimic walking lunges in small spaces. Heels elevated squats. Elevating your heels when squatting accomplishes two main objectives. One, it allows people with limited ankle mobility to squat deeper and more upright. Two, it targets the quads and stresses the knees more. Start with self-assistance or your body weight only using a slow three to five second eccentric or lowering phase with a one to two second pause at the bottom. Only use a pain-free range of motion to avoid knee swelling or flare-ups. Slant board sliding wall squats are a great way to safely build the lower quads or VMO and strengthen the knees. I also think it's the best place to start for heels elevated squatting. Sliding against the wall promotes a perfectly upright trunk position for zero spinal stress and maximal quads work. It's kind of like using the hack squat machine at home. Slide down to a pain-free range of motion for five seconds and hold for five seconds before returning to the starting position. Do 10 perfect reps. Ankle raises. This category wouldn't be complete without some direct ankle work for lower leg development. Cap raises involve plantar flexion. Shin raises involve dorsiflexion. Do at least an equal amount of both for training balance, though most people could benefit from more shin work. There are four main types of calf raises that you can do at home. Standing, leaning, hinging or donkey, and bent knee. Do them off of a low box or step, or use a slant board for maximum range of motion. Going straight legged targets your upper calf or gastrocnemius more. The bent legged version stresses your lower calf or soleus more. Once you can do 20 reps on both legs, progress to the single legged version for each variation. There are two main types of at home shin raises. One is leaning against a wall with the legs straight. This exercise increases in difficulty the further your feet move from the wall. The other is from a seated position which is best held isometrically for time. A great way to prevent shin splints is to pull your toes to your shins when sitting at your desk or on the toilet. Rock and roll ankle mobility is my favorite variation because it trains the calves and shins, plus reduces the risk of ankle sprains. Upper. The upper category focuses on the arm and shoulder muscles or the upper body. There's a healthy mix of push and pull exercises. Pushing exercises target your chest, front shoulders, and triceps more. Pulling exercises target your back, biceps, and rear delts more. Try to do an equal amount of exercises in each category for training balance. If there's a weakness in a given category, double or triple up on those drills. Most people could benefit from more pulling exercises. Scapular shrugs. The scapula sets the stage for the entire upper body. Your shoulder blades need to be able to move freely in all directions for shoulder health and performance. A shrug is a straight arm exercise that isolates scapular movement. Shrugs work your trapezius and serratus anterior muscles. Your upper trap elevates or pulls up your scapula. Your mid trap retracts or pulls back your scapula. Your low trap depresses or pulls down your scapula. And your serratus anterior protracts or pushes away your scapula. Here's a bodyweight shrug stack. One, pull up shrugs. Two, dip shrugs. Three, row shrugs. And four, push up shrugs. Here's a dumbbell shrug stack to strengthen each side independently. One, dumbbell one arm scap presses. Two, dumbbell one arm scap rows. And three, dumbbell one arm overhead shrugs. I love stacking all these moves back to back for 10 reps each. It's a perfect warm up or off day recovery routine. Your upper body will only go as far as your scapula will take it, so don't neglect these corrective exercises. If you struggle with these moves, start with 50 to 100 reps of band scap presses to get you started. Band face pulls. If I had to pick just one exercise to bulletproof the shoulders and improve posture, it would be the face pull. When done properly, it smokes all of the key muscles of the upper mid back and rear delts, plus it fortifies the delicate rotator cuff. Though this exercise is typically performed on a cable machine, I use a unique band setup at home. Attach one band to an anchor point that's slightly above head level. Loop another band through it and grab one end in each hand. I prefer to loop it around my wrists to prevent over gripping and excessive elbow flexion. Pull the band apart until your arms form a rear double biceps pose. Be sure to lead with your hands, not your elbows. Your grip should twist from overhand to palms facing to strengthen the external rotators. Crack a nut between your shoulder blades for a count or two and return to the starting position. Sets of 10 to 15 reps are ideal. A simple substitute is band pull-aparts. It can be performed both overhand and underhand. Make it harder by hinging at the hips like a bent over row so your arms work against gravity. 50 to 100 reps per day keeps the doctor away. Carries. 
The carry or farmer's walk is a full body core exercise, but if you can't grip it, you can't lift it. That's why it's listed in the upper category. As the load and time under tension grows on this exercise, so will your entire upper body. The key to getting the most out of this drill is to keep the weights away from your thighs and sustain an active rear delt contraction throughout. Go slow and keep your knees soft and toes pointing forward as of taking a sobriety test. There are three key holding positions from easiest to hardest. Hip level, shoulder level, and overhead. In terms of loading, you should be able to carry at least twice the weight at hip level that you can overhead. I love doing level change drop sets where I start with overhead carries for a minute, then drop to shoulder level for a minute, and finish with hip level for another minute. To increase core and hip activation, work in single arm variations. An awesome starter or finisher is to do a minute on each arm back to back for 10 straight minutes. Rows. The bodyweight row, often called a reverse push-up or horizontal pull-up, works the entire backside of the body. It's also a key stepping stone exercise to pull-ups. It can be done with parallel bars or gymnastics rings. The progression with parallel bars is knees bent to legs straight to feet elevated. When using gymnastics rings, the exercise is hardest the flatter you are to the floor. This exercise can also be performed with dumbbells to work each arm independently and strengthen and balances between sides. Chest supported rows are a great way to isolate the movement and take stress off the lower back. My favorite way to teach the row is on all fours as it auto corrects your form and technique and requires no equipment. Try the bird dog row for the best back, abs and shoulders workout you're not doing. Once competent and mobile enough, you can try dumbbell rows on your feet. Try to get your trunk parallel to the floor. Pull the weight towards your hips. Your arms should form a 90 degree angle at the top of the move. The upright row is another great shoulder and back builder. Just go light and don't pull the weight higher than chest level. Push-ups. The push-up is another total body abs exercise, but it primarily targets the chest, front delts, and triceps. It's also a key stepping stone exercise to the dip. A wider grip stresses the chest more. A closer grip makes the triceps work harder. Use the classic body angle progression for push-up mastery. Hands elevated, to floor, to feet elevated, to piked. But even advanced trainees benefit from using all angles because they stress different muscles. Hands elevated hits the lower pecs. Floor hits the mid pecs. Feet elevated hits the upper pecs. And piked stresses the shoulders most. One of my all-time favorite workouts is a mechanical change drop set where you do max reps of each variation with little to no rest, going from the hardest to easiest variation. If you're struggling with push-ups, start with eccentric only reps where you lower from the toes and cheat up on the knees. You can also use bands to assist or resist. If your wrists bother you, use dumbbells or parallel bars which also extend the range of motion. Oh yeah, be sure to mobilize your wrists too. Pull-ups. The pull-up is the ultimate upper body exercise. It's also the hardest for a few reasons. One, it involves all of your body weight. Two, your arms are overhead. This extreme joint angle challenges your mobility and stability to the max. Plus, it creates a natural blood flow restriction effect since oxygenated blood has to travel upwards against gravity. But the bodybuilding benefits are off the charts. There are three primary ways to help you build up to perfect pull-ups. One, use band assistance, which helps you the most out of the bottom position. Two, use self-assistance from your lower body. Three, do eccentric only reps where you cheat up and then slowly lower for three to five seconds. I recommend mixing between all three for best results. In terms of grip, you're strongest with an underhand grip due to maximum biceps contribution. The hammer grip puts your joints in a very safe neutral position and stresses the brachialis muscle more, which is sandwiched between the biceps and triceps. The overhand grip is super challenging because it requires the most mobility and stability to pull off. I love doing self-assisted pull-ups for two to three minute sets to maximize the mind-muscle connection. The pump is precious. Mix your grip for best results. Dips. The dip is the king of chest and triceps exercises. And if you perform it properly, it also smokes the rear shoulders and upper back. Like the pull-up, it's an extreme joint angle exercise except your shoulder is an extension instead of flexion. Just like with push-ups, keep your forearm vertical to the floor to get the most out of this exercise and take pressure off the elbows. There are three primary ways to help you build up to perfect dips. One, use band assistance which helps you the most out of the bottom position. Two, use self-assistance with your lower body. Three, do eccentric only reps where you cheat up and then slowly lower for three to five seconds. I recommend mixing between all three for best results. Though some fitness experts say to never do off-bench dips, I think it's an excellent exercise if you have the hip and shoulder mobility to do it pain-free. It's easier to do than the parallel bar dips and it stresses the triceps more than the chest. Progress from knees bent to legs straight to feet elevated. I love to do max reps parallel dips immediately followed by off bench dips for an epic pump and burn. Presses. 
Consider presses to be the open chain companion of the closed chain push-up. Because your hands move independently in free space, presses increase the stability and mobility demands and strengthen each arm independently. Like with push-ups, keep your elbows at a 30 to 45 degree angle from your trunk to protect your shoulders. Be sure to press from every angle for best results. Incline presses hit your upper pecs. Flat presses hit your mid pecs. Decline presses hit your lower pecs. Overhead presses are the weakest position and it stresses your shoulders the most. You're typically twice as strong pressing horizontally versus vertically. Try my multi-angle pressing drop sets workout. Do eight to 12 or max reps overhead presses and repeat for incline, flat, and decline presses using the same weight with no more than 20 seconds of rest between moves. It's an incredible workout you can get done in five minutes or less. The floor press is not only a great way to build the top of your press, but it doesn't require a bench and it's easy on the shoulders. Add a band to get peak tension and peak chest and triceps contraction. Biceps curls. It's important to prioritize multi-joint compound exercises over single joint isolation exercises, especially when you're short on time. But there's nothing wrong with some dedicated work for the elbow joint. Not only will this maximize muscular development, but bigger and stronger biceps will make you better at all pulling exercises. Plus, they're fun and easy to recover from. There are three main grips to choose from. Overhand is the weakest position because the biceps can't assist as much, so the forearms lift most of the burden. Underhand maximizes biceps activation and requires the most mobility to perform since your shoulders are externally rotated. Hammer grip tends to be the strongest position and targets the brachialis. My favorite biceps workout is stacking eight to 12 or max reps of each grip in the following order. Overhand, underhand, and hammer grip. I also love to mix in bands because you get peak tension and peak biceps contraction where the middle position at a 90 degree angle is the hardest with dumbbells. Performing dumbbell curls bent over fixes that and also builds your backside. Triceps extensions. Though the triceps get a ton of work from presses, dips, and push-ups, it's still important to isolate them for best results. For one, they comprise approximately two-thirds of your upper arm mass, so they have the biggest overall impact on arm size. In addition, the meaty long head of the upper arm is preferentially targeted by doing elbow extensions with the arms overhead because it attaches into the scapula. Triceps extensions can be done three main ways in order of difficulty. Overhead tricep extensions, lying triceps extensions, and triceps pushdowns. Use bands at a faster tempo to maximize the contraction phase. Use dumbbells at a slower tempo to maximize the stretch phase. I recommend going lighter for 10 to 15 plus reps for these moves since you get plenty of heavier work with multi-joint pushing moves. Focus first and foremost on range of motion. My favorite triceps workout stacks these three moves in a row from hardest to easiest for a fast and furious finisher. If you suffer from elbow pain, consider starting or ending your workout with 50 to 100 triceps pushdowns in as few sets as possible. Bands are easier on the joints and require less recovery time. Total. The total category focuses on full body movements that work a vast majority of your muscle mass. This maximally elevates your heart rate for an incredible cardiometabolic response. These high priority drills tend to provide the perfect mix of strength and conditioning, especially when time is tight. This makes them ideal for fat loss and lean muscle gain. Get ups. If I had to pick just one exercise for full body fitness, it would be the get up. Lay on your back with a dumbbell overhead and go from ground to stand and back. It's a multi move miracle combining planking, bridging, hinging, and lunging. And it's a lie detector test for your overall mobility, stability, strength, and stamina. It will literally bulletproof your whole body. And as the weight goes up, your muscles will grow from head to toe. Granted, there's a significant learning curve, but the greater the challenge, the greater the reward. The best way to learn and teach this drill is by breaking it down into the following six stages one, back to forearm. Two, forearm to hand. Three, bridge, four, leg sweep, five, lateral hinge, and six, lunge to stand. Once you master each stage, combine them for a full body flow. Prioritize the stages you struggle with the most to strengthen any weaknesses in the kinetic chain. Always begin from a fetal position to get grounded and safely organize your body. One of my favorite 10 minute workouts is to do one get up every minute on the minute for 10 minutes, switching sides each minute. It's so effective and efficient. Start with just your body weight, a soup can, or a light two and a half to five pound dumbbell. Build up to 100 plus pounds over time. Now that's raw strength. Boxing. Boxing is my favorite full body workout. Plus, it trains your brain. Stance. Use a staggered stance. A straight line should separate your feet. Switch feet to transfer from an orthodox to southpaw stance. First, get bouncing on your toes and forefoot. Then practice pivoting the feet and rotating the hips to prep for punches. And always keep your hands up. Hands. There are six basic punches with the following number system. One, jab. Two, cross. Three, lead hook. Four, rear hook. Five, lead uppercut. And six, rear uppercut. 
Focus first on mastering the straights, especially the jab, before adding hooks and uppercuts. Drill a single punch at a time before progressing to combos. Feet. Proper footwork is critical to maintaining balance. To move forward, lead with your front foot. To move backward, lead with your back foot. To move left, lead with your left foot. To move right, lead with your right foot. Never cross your feet. Push out against a mini band to encourage proper foot spacing. Train with boxing intervals. Three minutes of work with one minute of rest between rounds. Switch stances halfway into each round or between rounds. Slams. Besides boxing, there's no better exercise for mental health and stress relief than slams. The key to doing it right is to always keep your shoulders higher than your hips. Don't bend at the spine. To get the most out of the exercise, try to get all the way up on the toes to train triple extension of the ankles, knees, and hips. But you can still do some reps with the feet flat on the floor. To get more triceps recruitment, you can bring the ball behind your head. There are two main types of med balls to slam with. A bouncing ball is great for beginners and faster rep speeds. A slam ball requires a greater range of motion as you have to pick it up off the ground, but that increases posterior chain activation. There are so many slam variations. You can switch directions or stances or combine it with other movements like a halo. My favorite variation is the seesaw slam. Plus, you can modify the exercise with a faux slam where you never release the ball. Yeah, it's not as fun, but it's better than getting yelled at by your significant other or fielding complaints from your neighbors. Swings. A study showed that swings provide a similar cardiometabolic response to running without all the impact forces. It builds the entire backside of your body, plus it improves posture, making it an excellent anti-aging exercise. The swing is basically a hip hinge to standing plank. Master those two moves first. Your shoulders should always be higher than your hips. Keep your knees soft, but don't squat too much. Inhale through the nose into the belly as you hike the weight behind your hips to stabilize your spine. Fully exhale through your mouth to power the weight to chest level. Start light and for higher reps in the beginning until the muscle memory is locked in. Once you master the double arm swing, you can try it on a single arm, alternate hands, or stagger your stance. My favorite variation is the shuffle swing. You can modify this exercise with the sumo deadlift. You can even add a jump to increase the intensity. The best way to do this exercise with dumbbells is the skier swing. In fact, it can auto-correct your form since it's harder to squat with your feet closer together. Shuffles. The shuffle is an awesome cardio and agility exercise that can be done in small spaces. It also trains the often neglected frontal plane or lateral movement, reducing the risk of non-contact injuries like ACL tears. When done properly, it will strengthen the inner and outer hips and thighs. Start with shuffle walks to lay a strength and stability foundation. Add a mini band to increase lateral hip activation and encourage proper foot spacing. This is also an awesome leg day warm up and butt builder. I recommend two minute sets. To shuffle run, focus on pushing off with the trail leg, glutes, and pulling forward with the lead leg, groin, with the toes flared out. Drop your hips and plant your foot flat to change directions. Never let the feet come together or cross. Make it harder by dropping your hips more to increase thigh engagement. You can also hold a light med ball to increase the intensity. My favorite variation is the shuffle to crossover run. Skater jumps. The skater jump is one of my favorite cardio exercises. It's easy on the knees, but hard on the glutes. First master skater steps where the toes of the inside foot kickstand for extra support and stability. Then bridge the gap with the foot pickup technique. Finally, progress to jumping leg to leg without assistance. Here are some key performance pointers. One, keep your trail leg actively bent at 90 degrees and push it back to prevent you from leaning too much to the side. Two, swipe your arms across your body in the direction you're jumping to. Three, sit down to land softly and lower your center of gravity. Pause skater jumps involve sticking and holding the landing for two to five seconds. This is great for longer work periods of one to two minutes for stability and stamina. I also love twisting med ball skater jumps for more of a strength and power emphasis. Employ contrast training by using a med ball for 15 to 30 seconds and then drop the ball and use just your body weight for another 15 to 30 seconds. Or use the drop and pickup technique for added variety. Blast off push-ups. The best push-up to burn fat is my signature blast off push-up. Some people call it the Tyson push-up because apparently the former heavyweight champion of the world used to do them in training. To maximize fat loss, you have to pick exercises that work a lot of muscle mass. This increases your heart rate and calorie burn per minute. The blast off push-up adds a squat to tax your legs and lungs more. Plus, it smokes the upper back and improves posture. Too hard? Modify with the plank version. 
Too easy? Try it single-legged. Instantly upgrade the exercise by placing your feet against a wall. It's like the push-up and leg press have a belly fat burning baby. My favorite variation is gripping dumbbells to extend the range of motion and increase the push and pull effect. Try this metabolic starter or finisher at your next chest day. Max reps for 30 seconds, rest 30 seconds. Do five to 10 rounds. A good goal is to get 10 reps every 30 seconds. Looking for a slow cooker? Try doing it super slow for two to three minutes. It's where mobility meets muscle gain. Stationary running. For most people, running year round is a non-starter due to cold and rainy weather months. And the treadmill is expensive, but stationary running is a great substitute plus it's lower impact. First learn how to march with opposite arm leg mechanics. Your arms should form 90 degree angles throughout the drill. For the down leg, stomp your foot underground to maximize glute activation. For the up leg, simultaneously drive the knee above hip level, lift the foot to your hamstrings, and pull your toes to your shin. Balance your head over the foot of your support leg. Now you're ready to run. Start slow and gradually build up speed. Use a 4-4 rhythmic breathing tempo. Smoothly inhale through the nose into the belly for four steps and fully exhale through the mouth for four steps. Repeat for time. For an extra breathing challenge, both inhale and exhale through the nose only. For the world's greatest cardio workout, alternate between 30 seconds of running and 30 seconds of marching for 10 straight minutes. You can even horizontally anchor a resistance band at hip level to allow for a more natural forward lean. FYI, the best stationary running variation for your abs is from a plank position. Climbers are a staple in my training. Hands elevated burpees. The burpee combines a hinge, push-up, squat, and jump into one undeniably hellish total body torture. But this classic exercise has fallen out of favor because of its complexity and difficulty. Many people butcher the move because they don't have the mobility to get up and down off the ground without collapsing or rounding their spines. Enter the hands elevated burpee. Using a low box or step allows you to customize the range of motion to your current fitness level. An adjustable aerobic step with risers allows for micro progression so you can gradually work your way to the floor over time. However, I recommend using at least a slight elevation even for advanced trainees. It just puts your shoulders and spine in a better position for long-term success. I also recommend a wider sumo stance. My favorite option is using parallel bars which also allows for extended range of motion push-ups with less wrist stress. If it's still too tough, skip the push-up and the jump. If you still hate burpees, just superset squats and push-ups, call it a day, and leave me out of it. Box thrusters. Thrusters, or the squat to press, is a popular CrossFit combination exercise that tests the mind, body, and soul. Personally, I prefer box thrusters for the general population, especially because this exercise can be a disaster when performed too heavy or too fast. Sitting onto a box auto-corrects your form and takes pressure off of the back and knees. You can also customize the box height to your current fitness level to get all the pros of this drill without the cons. I also recommend a more joint-friendly hammer grip. Smart exercise selection is more than half the battle when it comes to sound training. For a killer cardio challenge, use Tabata intervals. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off for eight rounds. It will be one of the hardest four minute workouts of your life. You can also do this drill one arm at a time to unload the spine and challenge your core more. Other great combination exercises inspired by Olympic lifting include hang cleans, high pulls, snatches, push presses, and split jerks. The 20 minute fit over 40 express workout. I've handpicked the top two exercises from each category to form an elite eight and strategically ordered them into a flawless full body flow with a built-in warm-up. This is an ideal minimalist routine for max results when time is tight. Plus, there's so much inherent variation that you can get a million miles out of this single routine. Here's how it works. Alternate between two minutes of work and 30 seconds of rest in the exact order listed. One, crawls. Two, get-ups. Three, hanging leg raises. Four, glute ham leg curls. Five, dips. Six, lunges. Seven, pull-ups. And eight, boxing. Use the rest pause method as needed, taking brief 10 to 20 second breaks when you can no longer perform quality reps. Feel free to repeat this circuit one to two more times for a longer 40 to 60 minute training session. Crawls. Crawls provide the ultimate built-in ground-based warm-up. Slow and steady is the way. Pick a single variation or flow on feel for time. I love doing one minute of bear crawls and one minute of crab crawls for complete hip, shoulder, and core activation. Get-ups. Perform one left-sided get-up in minute one. Perform one right-sided get-up in minute two. 
Start light and focus on flawless form, pausing briefly at each stage of movement to display mastery. Make each rep last a full minute. 30 seconds up, 30 seconds down. You could also isolate a single stage, one of six, for a minute on each side. Hanging leg raises. Only elite trainees will be able to hang for two straight minutes, so prepare to rest pause briefly for 10 to 20 seconds as needed. My favorite way to fill this two minute block is to do max reps with a heavier med ball, then max reps with a lighter med ball, and then max reps with body weight only. You can also modify this exercise with reverse crunches. Glute ham leg curls. Once you can do the double legged version for two straight minutes nonstop, progress to doing one minute on each leg back to back. Don't rush through the reps. Milk this body weight exercise for everything it's worth. Close your eyes and focus on maximizing the mind muscle connection. You can also modify this exercise with hip thrusts. Dips. Though two minutes of straight dips is the ultimate goal, it ain't gonna happen right away. Do max quality reps unassisted and finish the rest of the time self-assisted. You could also do two minutes of self-assisted reps. My favorite approach is max reps dips in minute one and max reps push-ups in minute two. Modify further by doing push-ups the whole time if needed. Lunges. Pick between two minutes of alternating lunges or one minute per side back to back. Feel free to mix in other lunge variations too. Once you own this with your body weight, progressively overload with dumbbells or wear a weight vest. If you don't have access to weights, increase speed of movement. You can also modify this exercise with step ups. Pull ups. Like with dips and hanging leg raises, it will take a long time, maybe a lifetime, to build up to two minutes of straight pull ups. Do max quality reps unassisted and finish the rest of the time self assisted. You could also do two minutes of self assisted reps. My favorite approach is max reps pull ups in minute one and max reps rows in minute two. Modify further by doing rows the whole time if needed. Boxing. Shadow box for one minute in each stance, orthodox and southpaw. Start by perfecting the jab or one, then perfect the cross or two. Now combine them into a one-two combo. This will take months of practice before mastery, but it will lay an excellent foundation. At this point, you can start working on the other punches or more advanced combos. I also highly recommend working with a local boxing pro. They call it the sweet science for a reason. Thanks a million for watching. I hope you enjoyed this 40 plus minute journey in physical education. I know this was a long video, but these are the moves I'm personally investing in the next 40 plus years, God willing. As a special gift for making it to the end, I have a free downloadable ebook of this top 40 fit over 40 exercises list. Just click the link in the video description to get instant access. Please post any questions you have in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel so you never miss new content. Peace. If you like this video, be sure to watch this video next.